Hey everybody, how are you doing? Today I want to do a lag busting video because I recently found out that certain hopper configurations are extremely laggy. So this hopper with a chest on top would create as much lag as 1000 empty hoppers. The goal of this video is to test a lot of different hopper formations in order to ascertain the lag they would cause. So in the end this information should be useful to you to avoid lagging your server or single player world by accident. The tool I'm using in order to measure the lag is Gnemon's Carpet mod. So it works like this. It displays how much lag is caused by different things in a game. For example, Entities is 0.003. That's only the player. So I'm the only ent entity in this world and I'm causing uh, this amount of milliseconds per tick stress. So the way it works, uh, the game runs at 20 ticks per second. So that means uh, the calculations can take up to 50 milliseconds before the game starts lagging. And in order to do all the calculations for those 1000 hoppers, you need to invest 0 0.286 milliseconds per tick. Uh, so you could have about 200,000 hoppers before the game starts lagging, empty hoppers that is. Of course, this also depends on your computer or server performance. I'm doing all the tests in Minecraft 1.12, that's the current carpet mod version. So now we can also compare the lag that is caused by the empty hoppers with this hopper formation. So we just have a hopper, which is filled with five different items. And on top we have a double chest, which contains none of the items that are in the hopper. So if I do the tick health command and run the game for about 10,000 ticks, then you should get a new output soon. And then we can see the increase in milliseconds per tick. And from that value, we can derive the amount of lag that is caused by this single hopper. Okay, so the new value is 0 0.626. Um, so as you can see, this is actually more lag than the 1000 empty hoppers would cause. The empty hoppers uh, would cause 0 0.268 uh, milliseconds per tick. And this hopper with the chest on top is approximately 0 0.33 milliseconds per tick. So this hopper actually causes more stress than 1000 empty hoppers. The first thing I want to test is if putting droppers on top of hoppers is beneficial. The idea here is that um, the hopper doesn't need to check for entities above itself to be sucked up. It only needs to check for the container block above instead. Um, so the results that I got weren't definitive. Uh, yeah, depending on the fluctuations, the amount of lag caused by this 10, uh, 1000 hoppers and droppers um, was pretty much the same as with the empty hoppers. So it seems like this doesn't really help. Um, I tested this before in I think 1.11 and there I got a 10% improvement uh, with the droppers, but it seems like this is not really worth it. And another test, this time I filled all the hoppers with the same item type and made them point into each other. This is something you could usually have in the Minecraft world, for example, if you um, have a slower dropper elevator in the back and the items keep piling up. Then it's something you could have in your world and the results were quite interesting. So this causes more lag. It would cause 0 0.468 milliseconds per tick stress. So I will use the empty hopper now as a unit of lag in order to get better yeah, comparability. Um, so the filled hopper would create 0 0.74 times as much lag as the empty hopper. This time I filled up the hoppers with different item types in order to see if this causes more lag. But the test results negate that theory. The difference between this test and the one before is about 3% and uh, think this is just normal variance. And here's another test. So we have a hopper with one item in it pointing into an air block. So there's something you would use for example for a chunk loading grid and this is about as laggy as an empty hopper. This is the next test that I did. I blocked all the hoppers with a redstone source and this improved the performance drastically. So I got tile entity 0 0.033 and this means that a hopper that is blocked by redstone source causes as much lag as 0.12 normal empty hoppers. So next let's see if items flowing through hoppers causes a lot of lag. So I filled up a double chest on one side and we transport them to the other double chest here. So here we have the results, tile entries 1.215 milliseconds. So that's significantly more lag. But we also need to test if maybe the chest on top of the hopper alone causes all of that lag. So I'm gonna just remove those hoppers here and just put the corresponding chests there again. And then we test everything without those hoppers once. 
And here we have the new test results, tile entity 0.071, and this confirms that the hoppers transferring the items were the actual lag causer. So a hopper transferring an item causes approximately 4.5 times as much lag as a normal empty hopper. I also want to check how much lag the other tile entities cause. So here we have 1000 chests, respectively trapped chests, and they cause pretty much as much lag as a blocked hopper, 0.035. I was curious if the amount of items in the chests would affect the result, so I filled them up completely, but this is definitely not the case. The results are very similar. Next tile entity, droppers. And they don't cause any lag at all, as you can see, tile entity is 0.0. .0. Same result for the Spencer, no lag cost at all. The furnace on the other hand takes 0.028 milliseconds to be processed, so approximately as much as the block topper or the chest. This is a bit interesting. The brewing stands require a bit more performance. We tested this 10 times in a row, just to make sure that it's not just some variance. Uh, so they take 0 0.047 milliseconds to be processed. It's about 66% more than a furnace, but it's still negligible compared to the hopper seam. That's also an interesting one. So 1000 beacons take 0 0.066 milliseconds to be processed. So slightly more than a brewing stand, but it's still totally negligible. So you could use beacons as a decoration block without worrying if you can afford it. I'm suspecting that if you would have an active beacon, so if you just have some iron blocks below that, this could change. So let's test this next. That's also an interesting one. Active beacons cause approximately the same amount of lag. I was maybe worried that they would actively check the blocks above them in order to check for skylight access, but that's definitely not the case, and even active beacons are no problem at all for the server performance. Ender chests next. They're yeah, laggier than a beacon, but still uh, quite a way off from the empty hopper. So the tile entry is 0.1 milliseconds. Enchanting tables are approximately as laggy as beacons, 0.062. Now we have the shulker box and it causes as much lag as a chest or a block topper, 0.038. I also already tested juke boxes, node blocks and anvils and they don't cause any lag at all. Alright, so after testing all of those tile entities, let's get back to testing hoppers. So here we have a yeah, normal formation, you can find it almost in every storage system. So we have a filled double chest and a hopper in the back trying to input items, but yeah, I can't because the chest is filled up. So we already have the results, and this is interesting, tile entities 1.899. So a hopper like this would cause about 7 times as much lag as an empty hopper. I slightly changed the configuration, now we have a different item type in the hopper than in the chest. And this is significantly more laggy. So we have tile entities 19.268. That's a factor of 72 compared to a normal empty hopper. And I would say this is already something you should probably avoid. Uh, next, I want to test if having the same type of item in the double chest uh, would also affect it. <clears throat> so if you have, for example, a stack of planks in here and other different items, basically just have uh, different item types here in the chest in the back. So this is quite interesting. having. Different item types in the hopper isn't a big problem as long as you also have those item types in the double chest. So here are the results, tile entities 2.041, approximately the same result as with the single item type. It's only an issue if you have different item types here in the hopper that aren't present in the chest. So we're slowly coming to an end here, this is one of the last tests. So this time we have a filled hopper under a filled double chest. And this takes 0 0.783 milliseconds to process, so this is about 1.7 times um, as costly as a filled hopper without the double chest on top. So the double chest definitely adds some lag to it. And the total this hopper configuration with the chest is about three times as laggy as a normal empty hopper. And this is the last test. We already know the result of this one here. This is the super laggy one. If you have a hopper with different items under a double chest. So here are the results, I just tested this with 10, because if we would build this up 1000 times, then it would probably crash the game. And we have tile entities 3.3, .3, just with 10 of those. Um, so this is about 1240 times laggier than an empty hopper. And this is something you should avoid at all costs. So here's another test, because recently some people were worried that the standard item filter system would cause a lot of lag, and they don't do it all. So I have 1000 modules here, 
which consists out of two hoppers, one at the bottom, one at the top. The bottom one is also powered all the time. And on top one you have different items and yeah, nothing above. And this would cause yeah, pretty much as much lag as empty hoppers would. So nothing really extraordinary here. Um, so in total we got 0 0.571 milliseconds. I could even have 100,000 of those item filled systems before the game would start lagging. So those are not a problem. So what's the takeaway from this video? First of all, tile entities and hoppers aren't really that laggy per se. So I have a yeah, slightly above average compute at the moment and I could have about 200,000 hoppers in this empty world here before the game would start lagging. So they aren't really that much of a problem. Just certain hopper configurations are really a problem. Especially this one here, when you have different items in a hopper than in the double chest above. And also to a lesser degree, the situation where you have different items in the hopper and it points into a chest with also different items. Then if you were really worried about lag and if you have a giant storage system, you could always do something like this. You could disable the hoppers. Also powering empty hoppers is always a good idea um, if you're really worried about lag. But since it's not that much of a problem, uh, most cases it's not really that necessary. I hope this video was useful for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.